Hello and welcome to Around the Wickets. You're on the Papare.com. Well, we are talking to you after a rather controversial one-day series against Zimbabwe. Now, I know that no one, none of us, in our wildest dreams, expected Sri Lanka to lose to Zimbabwe three matches to two. Now, when the first game was lost, we thought it was one of those days and we all expected Sri Lanka to just... Uh, breeze through the Zimbabwean side and we were also thinking that this was one off day for Sri Lanka and also one of the rare cricketing days for Zimbabwe in their rather poor recent record. But how different uh, was our thing or at least how different was Zimbabwe? They completely disproved all of us. And I thought that the Zimbabweans had a brilliant plan. Zimbabwe is not a great team. They don't have too many match winners. But I can tell you one thing. They may not have stars but they played as a star team. Not a team of stars, but as a star team. They had a few plans and they executed it perfectly. Now, plan number one to me was to try and negate the Sri Lankan spinners. Now, how did they do that? They came up with a very innovative method and that is to start sweeping the Sri Lankan spinners and just keep attacking them from ball one. They always knew that the Sri Lankan strength will be spin and the challenge for them in Sri Lanka will be spin. And plan number two for me is to try and beef the batting. They were trusting their batting because that was their strength. So they just played to their strength and they were hoping that Sri Lanka will wilter under pressure. Now that's exactly what happened. Now in the first game, Solomon Mire was a sensation. He just came out sweeping and sweeping and sweeping. And I felt that Akila Dananje and Amila Aponso were completely completely at sea. They were never or they did uh, never encounter a batsman who swept as well and who attacked the spin bowling as well as Solomon Mire did. Then came the goal game. Lakshan Sandakan comes into the side. Then we have Vanidu Hasaranga coming on and then a sensational combination between Sandakan and Hasaranga and then we know what happened. Rest is history. Sri Lanka winning quite easily. And then the Sri Lankan batting play. The opening partnership of Gunatilaka and uh, Dikwella, in fact, uh, creating a world record, the first ever pair of batsmen getting back-to-back -back double hundreds. Now, I wouldn't really want to dwell too much about Sri Lanka's batting because I thought Sri Lankan batting was good and you could always have an odd off day for the likes of uh, 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 Dikwella who, who was in top form. But it, the disappointing thing was the way the Sri Lankans bowled and fielded. The fielding was absolutely appalling. The catchers dropped were bad and the bowling, the lack of penetration was just inexplicable. Uh, one wouldn't expect Sri Lanka to bowl so badly. And when the spinners had, were challenged by the Zimbabwean batsmen, I felt they had no real clue. Even in the last game, the fourth game, when Sri Lanka had to defend 300 and then they were up against the duckworth lewis uh, uh, system or the method and the rain, the Sri Lankan spinners had no clue. Lakshan Sandakan, when attacked to me, looked quite ordinary. When he when he's allowed to bowl, when he's allowed to dictate terms, Lakshan Sandakan is in a different zone or a different league. But as soon as he's taken on, I get the feeling that he seems to struggle. Now that's an area young Lakshan Sandakan will have to work very hard. I'm not in any way taking away that X factor that he has. They are not taking anything away from the fact that he can be a match winner on his day. And what we want Lakshan Sandakan to be is a match winner on a more regular basis. And then of course, Vanidu Hasaranga. What a dream debut for him. A hat-trick on his debut. Only the third player in the world to do that. And I don't think any leg spinner in the world has ever got a one-day hat-trick. Now, would you believe that stat? Shane Vaughan, uh, Abdul Khadir. Stuart McGill, uh, quite a few, uh, in fact, Imran Tahir out of the current crop, quite a few big names in this leg spinning uh, industry and none of them, Anil Kumble, none of them had got a hat-trick in their one-day career. So, what a great start for Vanidu Hasaranga. But let's also remember that Vanidu Hasaranga is more a batting all-rounder. Now, 3-2 defeat for Sri Lanka, unexpected and certainly baffled and the Sri Lankans look totally in disarray. And uh, what is the end result? Sri Lanka loses Angelo Matthews as captain. Now, what about the decision of Angelo Matthews to step down? I think it's a good decision because when you're not enjoying what you're doing, when you're under pressure and when you're someone who is valuable to the team, not just as captain, as batsman, 
then I think, uh, you know, you need to decide when to go rather than people asking why not. You need to go when people possibly might ask why, but I'm not very sure whether people are asking why even in this case because Angelo Matthews himself didn't uh, really look uh, too pleased to carry on or really didn't look uh, to be in the need to carry on. So we got to respect Angelo Matthews' decision and I believe it's a good one. Now what we have to expect, the silver lining out of this dark cloud is to expect Angelo Matthews to perform and contribute more as a batsman, as the senior statesman in the Sri Lankan batting unit because Sri Lanka will need him. You know, Zimbabwe test match that Sri Lanka will play is not really is a, not going to be a huge challenge, I'll tell you. Of course, we can't write them off because Zimbabwe surprised Sri Lanka in the one-day game. But let's face it, Sri Lanka, Zimbabwe, if you compare the two test teams, Zimbabweans don't have that cutting edge in bowling to try and dismiss 20 batsmen. Sri Lanka has Rangan Hera. Well, Rangana Hera, Dilruan uh, Pereira, two top spinners in the world. Suranga Lakmal is in the side. So, the Sri Lankan bowling attack looks much better coming into the test match. It looks a much settled side. And if Angelo Matthews can step up and get runs, and with the new captain, Dinesh Chandimal, also uh, out of form uh, in the recent past, but surely too good not to be scoring runs, expected to really beef the batting, I believe Sri Lanka should do well against Zimbabwe. But the question for Sri Lanka is not Zimbabwe. The challenge is not Zimbabwe. We need to look ahead. India is going to be a much bigger, much tougher challenge. So how equipped is Sri Lanka to face the Indian challenge? Well, we'll talk about it later. But as far as the Zimbabwe series is concerned, the one-day series is done and dusted. Sri Lanka need to forget it. In my opinion, lots of people tend to think that Sri Lanka cricket is in a mess. I'm not going to debate that point. I'm not going to argue that point. Lots of people think that Sri Lanka cricket is over. I certainly don't think so. I believe that Sri Lanka cricket is very much alive and kicking. The problem as far as Sri Lanka cricket is concerned is not the lack of talent. It's the way they play. You cannot beat any side in the world with all the talent in the world if you don't really perform the way you perform. And there are three areas in the game that you need to perform, not just batting. Sri Lanka batted brilliantly, but all of you know how badly Sri Lanka bowled and fielded. Now, the bad or, or the weakness in bowling and fielding had nothing to do with the players involved. It was the way they played. So, it's time that Sri Lanka pulls their sock, socks up and it's time that they approach the test match with, with renewed vigour and looking forward to defeating Zimbabwe in the only test match to try and salvage some lost prestige. So, that's it on Around the Wickers on the Papare.com. Hopefully, when we talk to you again, we'll be smiling more. Until then, it's goodbye.